they're getting really creative with these packages from China. It is 2021. And they're still making NES clone system. It's freaking unbelievable, people. I have reviewed here on the channel, I think, almost every single NES and Super NES clone mini I could find. Just check it out what it is. But this time, now in 2021, we're going to have more like the all-in-one systems with the HD. Or, nevertheless, HDMI function. It's a quite interesting story when you're looking at all of these, let's say, NES clones. And there was quite some development. So in the beginning they were pretty shitty and a couple of them were pretty decent to enjoy. And some even with HDMI back in the day. But finally we're having an all one system that can basically play five different systems. And we're having HDMI function. So let's take a close look what's inside. Okay guys, so this is what we're going to get inside the package itself. So let's begin with the console. Just begin with the best. Okay, this case is something new. And more like a black translucent casing. And this is the first time I have seen it with an NES clone. I love this more like bringing something new to the market. But the options like a reset button, power button is nothing new. The same goes for the HDMI of course. But we're having a mini USB in. Kind of weird. Old school. But the ports for the controllers are just the old school ports. Take consideration. You, most of the time you cannot even use original controllers from the NES. Then we're having here the controllers, and the controllers, that's even more weird. So this time we're not going to get the wireless version. Sometimes we do the, get the wireless things, not great, but still. Just the old school wireless version. And the wireless version, it's quite interesting. As you can see, we're having just four buttons and four shoulder buttons. The shoulder button is more like clickish. And it feels not bad. It comes with a very short, a very thin cable. Yeah, short and not a short like, let's say, the controllers or the original controllers back in the day from the NES Classic. So quite an interesting concept. I've never seen this before. And of course, having the HDMI cable. That is, by the way, a very long one. We're going to get a USB to mini USB. Sadly, there is no 5-volt adapter, so you need to buy that one separately if you can't use the power from your television. And a save. Not the last for best. Use your Mendui, I think there needs to be an L, but nevertheless, just a basic piece of paper that explains how to connect it, how it works, and not a lot of in technical information. So yeah, let's connect it and let's see what we're going to get. Okay guys, so after some messing around, I finally got this thing to work. And the signal output doesn't look that bad. But the menu, here's where it gets really interesting in my opinion. Because I have seen this menu many times before, like with handhelds, with arcade machines. So let's, let's see what we can do and what we can, what are going to get with this. Because we're having settings, history, game, videos, music, ebook, pictures, file, and settings again. That's quite interesting because this is more like... The same stuff that we're going to get with these handhelds. Language, advanced, we can adjust the screen. Information, let's check out what it says. Firmware version, okay. Here we're having the total free space. So there's not a lot of stuff we can do with it. Oh, we can format the internal memory, we'll not do that. Otherwise you're going to be messing up the system. We can watch pretty picture, we can watch some naughty movies. Listen to some music. And of course, play some games. CPS or Arcade, Famicom Mega Drive, and even having PlayStation 1 support. Ooh, that sounds interesting. And we're having Hack. What the hell is Hack? What the hell is Hack? Okay, so there's some weird stuff going on. But let's take a close look at some games. Let's test out some games because I'm very curious how the emulation is with this thing. Before we're going to start the game, what is quite interesting that we're also having an option to do a quick load, quick save. We're having some settings, so let's take a close look at this. Hey, look, look at this, we're having screen size. So this is the option that we had with different model handhelds. It doesn't work that perfect, like we're getting this very tiny screen. It's not a perfect express ratio, like 4x3. But it is an improvement, it's something I've never seen before. And it's if you want to start a game, you need to restart it. Yeah, makes sense. All right, so let's see how this game is running. So far, so good. Round one, fight. 
So I have a feeling the gameplay is a little bit choppy. And the D-pad on this thing is awful. I can't get a move out. Nothing. It's so unresponsive. And here comes the major problem with the stupid system. Is that we can't add USB controllers. So we're stuck with the shitty controls. Wow, I can do something. Oh, the other part of the D-pad did seem to be working. Yeah, it's more like pressing down and right. That is not working at the moment. Yeah. I would say, not bad. Let's press select and start, it will give me the menu itself. But mess around with the settings. Let's see what happens if I'm going to... Whatever. Yeah, never. It doesn't... 50! The guy just hit me in the back. Let's bring the dynamite and blow something up. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> Sound effects are here. Music sounds not bad at all. Sounds pretty good. So. Is it me? I did I just get hit? But oh, what's that? I didn't take any damage. Would that be the first time they use more like in weird? Foul, like heck game or whatever. Hoppa. No, no problem here. So NES seems to be working fine. Another thing that I noticed is that there is quite a difference between the emulators again, like the sound. Crank up the volume. Hmm. I must say, it sounds weird, but I can live with it. Nice frame rate. Looks, everything looks nice. Okay, so let's play the game with a shitty control. Come on, press down. Sound effects are here. Yep. No, not running into the freaking like rhino. Let's see how the 3D part works. Wow! The D-pad. You know, for fighting games, the D-pad is freaking horrible, but for games like this, it's just fine. Okay, next game. I can already hear from the title song that the sound is off. That's why, like with the first generation of these, let's say, Xbox clones or weird stuff they're releasing, the sound was off too. So, this is just a big bummer. Search the button. You hear the sound that it's not like it should be. I see how the sound effects are. See, a couple of seconds delay. So Game Boy Advance is just completely messed up. <clears throat> like I'm always saying, they need to mess something up. Why can't they do it right for every single handheld or console and otherwise just leave it from the system? Yep, Donkey Kong Country 3, or 2, sorry, I mean 2, sounds like shit. So let's boot it up, one player, let's go. You can hear it slowing down. Let's see if we're going to get some choppy image. Oh no, image quality is not bad at all. All the sound effects are here. But you can see that the game is not running on the same speed like the original Super NES back in the day. Yeah. 
So what I noticed with the PlayStation 1, and this is not a very high demanding game, but I did notice that it, it still struggles, like with Super Famicom. The gameplay, it is not bad. Alright, so let's try another game that is more demanding. Let's see how this is running. Ah, you can see that it's not running that smooth anymore. So that, really that is what I wanted to show you. It's more like when you're having more 3D, gra 3D graphic designed games, they will have an issue with the system. In my opinion, this is just freaking unplayable. It's a nice effort for getting PS1 on a cheap system like this, but it's like always a mixed bag. But it kept me wondering, so is there a way so we can add games? So normally what we're going to get with these clones, they are having an SD slot, but sadly with this thing it's not possible. So I'm hoping there is an SD card in the inside. So what we're going to do is removing the four rubbery feet, remove the four screws, and we're going to check out what is in the inside. All right, so let's open up and what's inside. What you're going to get are basically two PCBs. Yeah, there is nothing more. So the front PCB connects the two micro switches over here for the reset and the on and off. And of course, we're having the two ports for the controllers. Sadly, I'm still bummed up. They're not using a version like with USB controllers, so we can use something differently. The first thing I'm noticing is that there is no, there is no information on the main chip. And the other thing is more like, Where's the SD slot? So let's remove the two extra parkers because I want to know for sure is there not an SD card on this freaking thing? Because if this is not an if this is not a possibility to switch out the games, that would be just a really big bummer. Because we're only having two PlayStation 1 games on the system and yeah. You would have to upgrade an SD card and maybe add more. Okay, so let's remove these. And guess what? They messed it up in my opinion, big time. So yeah, all fun and game that we're having emulators that can basically that run everything perfectly. But there was no way of upgrading the system. Let's say swap out an SD card and just make it maybe better or add some new games. So what you see is what you're going to get. And it is not good. Okay guys, so to begin with the controller. I find it a very unique concept if you look at it. So the four buttons at the front and we're having four shoulder buttons. I wish they would make more of these kind of controllers. Of course high quality because the D-pad is really shitty. Yeah and they're just using this basic sticker on it. I really like the translucent casing. Before, for me you can just basically remove the sticker and make it full translucent. That would be just great. Just plastic slight and start. Nothing special but in the end. Yeah, it's a controller that is not that great in the end. So guys, the system is not bad. But it's not also very great. And the reason why is the problems it has, especially when it comes to the emulation. How can we add games? Oh, wait, we can't. And so there are more like these minor problems. And if you combine them all together, it's just not a good product to buy. Maybe the translucent case is great for your collection to put it for display. But if you want to play some games, like some system will run decent enough to enjoy. But most of them are having a choppy image or horrible sound. Nevertheless guys, I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit little bell, become one of the Wicked family. And let me know in the comments what do you think of systems like this. For you, I love to review them, check them out and let's see how horrible or maybe how good they are. And Hit that little bell, subscribe, become one of the Wicked Family, and I will see you in the next video.